If you'd like to know about helmet safety and certification such as Snell, DOT, and ECE, watch this. Today we're going to talk about uh, helmets in general and the certifications that they go through. So let's go back to the beginning. What is the primary purpose of a helmet? The primary purpose of a, of a helmet is to protect your head in the event of a fall. And how does it do that? It does that by managing the acceleration that you might feel if you were to uh, have an uh, impact that would co uh, come against a uh, static object. Um, so the acceleration that your head would feel is measured in the amount of G's that your head feels inside the helmet. So uh, essentially uh, what you want to do in, in purchasing a helmet is to take a look at the certifications. Um, and how do they get there? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. There's, there's several worldwide standards and then we're narrowing down to three standards. The three safety standards that we're here to talk about today are the Department of Transportation, uh, the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard number 218, uh, the Snell Memorial Foundation or the Snell uh, M2010, and also uh, the European Community's uh, uh, helmet with or certification which is called the ECE 2205. The Department of Transportation is, is required by law. The other two are, are optional uh, scenarios that, uh, that you can choose. A lot of manufacturers choose to get a secondary uh, opinion. The nice thing about every one of the standards is that there is somebody looking out for your safety and while they all use a little bit different varying types of methods of testing they all are putting in a bare minimum head protection so that you can, uh, in the event of a fall, your head will not feel uh, a, a major impact causing, you know, of course, concussions or, you know, something worse. Uh, so that's what we're talking about here. All right, as we, as we talked about the... Um, Certifications testing basically is a baseline for measuring the amount of G's that your head feels. So some of the varying uh, uh, ideas within the optional standards and the Department of Transportation vary only slightly, but the amount of G's sometimes is up or down based on uh, uh, criteria that they have set up. Uh, but there's one thing that's pretty consistent with every one of them. And that's the types of testing that every helmet will go through in varying environments, for one. If you're riding in cold weather, you know, a negative 20 degrees Celsius, um, or if you're riding in hot weather at 120 degrees, uh, um, well, Fahrenheit, uh, or 20 degrees uh, Celsius, 20 plus, and just riding in general, uh, uh, you know, general weather, which would be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, which is essentially room temperature, or if you're riding in the rain. All of the manufacturers and or certifications that are done within this group all are managed within there so that they test a helmet at the very, very cold, they test a helmet in the very, very hot, they test one at room temperature, and then they test one that's been submerged underwater. Um, so that uh, it will, we know that the helmets will perform uh, for each one of those environments. The other part that is uh, somewhat similar but still changes uh, varying, uh, which would be the types of impacts that, uh, that the helmet experiences. So I'm going to show you uh, real briefly here some of the uh, environments that they tend to land on. Uh, like in, in this particular area, you'll see that we have a flat, a curbstone, uh, a hemisphere, and an edge. Uh, the helmet is dropped you know, from an apparatus uh, and also very slightly, but it lands on one of those conditions. And whether it's the wet one, or the cold, or the hot one, they all have to go through these, these uh, environments in which they land on something that would be similar uh, to something you would find outside. So um, we know that they can meet the range of the temperatures. We know that they have to hit similar things that you might hit on the, uh, the outside. Um, some of our uh, other things uh, that each one of these uh, these helmets now do, uh, which is to have a head form size scale, meaning an extra small head and a triple extra large head. They all have five different head forms on the inside, so that the you know the medium helmet is uh, one of the medium head forms and weighted accordingly. And uh, so you know you put this uh, test form. Uh, 
uh, head form on the inside. It's raised, you know, uh, depending upon which certification you're going with, and then it's dropped on, say, the uh, the hemisphere that we saw. And it could be a cold helmet. And the head form on the inside is measuring the amount of G's that your head would feel. So the 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 part that we uh, we really want you to know is that while it's hard to say which one of these certifications is best just knowing that there's a minimal standard that's been put into place um, and by checking your DOT um, you know there's uh, um, we have a DOT standard which is required checking a SNEL or checking an ECE um, certification once you're meeting those standards you're good there are several novelty helmets that you can and can be found in a, in a motorcycle dealership but if they don't have a DOT stickers which is your minimum know that they will not do a, a proper job of protecting your head in the event of a fall. Let's talk a little bit about the ECE standard that a, a, a lot of people have seen and have asked the question about. It's an, it's an emerging standard. Well, it's not necessarily an emerging standard. In Europe this is probably the, this is the number one standard. A lot of uh, BSI, Sharp, a lot of other standards have all gone away because of the ECE standard. One of the reasons is, uh, you know, there's over 58 uh, European countries right now that, uh, and actually around the world, uh, partner countries that uh, uh, are using this particular standard as their baseline, much like we have our DOT standard. Um, it does a really good job in protecting uh, your head for certain environments. Depends upon, you know, what you're going to hit and how you should fall. That's where Everybody's doing the bare minimums here. Um, the, the ECE helmet, I believe this is an ECE helmet here, uh, it, they do a batch testing program, which I think is phenomenal. So every 3,000 helmets, the helmet has to go through a recertification so that after 3,000 helmets are produced and you send more helmets to be destroyed, that's how they test helmets, and they send you 3,000 more labels if the criteria has been met that it didn't change from the original certification that you have. Uh, that's a batch testing uh, program and it, uh, it's very, very effective. Um, one of the um, other standards, uh, the, the Snell Memorial Foundation uh, does a, a phenomenal job as well um, in that, uh, you know, meeting and bringing up the safety standards across the board. Uh, but it is, uh, it's tested annually which is a little bit different, much like the DOT standard. It's tested annually. That means they bring in some helmets from the marketplace to just to test and see whether they're still meeting the standards. Uh, so those are come some of the differences between the ECE standard and the Snell and DOT standards. So you'll notice that a lot of helmets or some helmets have just one sticker, the DOT st uh, sticker, which is required by law. But you'll notice some have DOT and Snell, and some will have DOT and ECE. Uh, to say which is the best, you know, that's... Uh, that's uh, something that is, is, is tough to measure. Tell me how you're going to fall, and I'll tell me what uh, safety standard you should have on your head. So, in summary, we've talked about three different helmet standards that are recognizable here in the U.S. and in North America. We've talked about the DOT standard, which is the bare minimum standard that you have to meet. A lot of manufacturers also use uh, two other optional standards, the Snell uh, M2010 standard and the ECE 2205 standard, in order to have a secondary uh, certification on the helmet, just bringing up the, uh, your assurance that it's a, it's a quality helmet. Um, if you have uh, additional information that you would like to find, um, I think you can find the, uh, the helmetcheck.org, which is your bare minimum. I think you should check that out to make sure that your helmets meet the DOT standard or do some research on the Snell Fo a Memorial Foundation or the ECE standard. You can find plenty of that information online. We welcome all your questions. You can call us at 800-706-9476 or go to jcmotors.com, get live support, and you'll find out why JC Motors is where riders get deals.